In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the best collectible key issues of comic books to add to your collection for under $20. Coming at ya! Hello to all of my stingy comic book collectors, Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Recently we've been posting a lot of videos about collectible key issues of comic books that you could add to your collection and a YouTube user by the name of John Awakens requested that we post a video containing a list of some affordable comic books that one could potentially add to their collection. So John, if you are watching, the video today is for you. But before we get into our video, I just wanted to remind everybody that if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please do so because once the channel reaches 10,000 subscribers, we will be doing a giveaway and you'll have the chance to win one of many fabulous comic book prizes. If you want to know what is being given away, you could check out the link in the description, which will link you to a video that we posted not too long ago, uh, wherein we went over some of the prizes that we will be giving away. So you literally have nothing to lose. Subscribe to the channel and you will have the chance to win some pretty cool prizes. Also, if you get the chance, please check out the channel's new merch store. We just overhauled the merch store. We added a lot of new geeky designs to the store, which are really awesome. So if you want to pick up some awesome, cool, nerdy shirts like this, check out the link in the description and pick up a shirt to support the channel. And today's featured shirt from the merch store is Java the Hut. Look at that, coffee made by the man himself. But remember, with his coffee, Margon Won Shikopa. Check out this design as well as many others just like it. Uh, we have shirts, phone cases, mugs, decals. So let's get into our video. For those of you that have been with the channel for quite a while, I posted an affordable comics to add to your collection video a really long time ago. And we're talking probably almost a year and a half, two years ago. But some of the comics that were on that list are no longer in the affordable range. They're over $100 now and a lot of collectors that have been watching that particular video have been saying, hey, can you, can you update this video? Because, I mean, a lot of these are not really affordable anymore. So I think that's a great idea. I thought I would start off with comic books that are under the $20 price point uh, because a lot of people that are new to the hobby probably don't really want to be spending a lot of money on comics. And plus, if you're a seasoned collector, everyone likes a deal. Everyone likes spending a little to get something really, really cool. So this video is going to be for both new collectors and seasoned collectors alike. The books that you're going to be seeing in this list here today are in no particular order. I have some of them uh, and I will be showing you my personal copies, but uh, there are also others that I do not have. Starting with our first book, we have New Mutants number one. I personally love this book. I love it so much that I have not one, but two copies. This is not a trick. Now you're probably asking yourself, why should you add this to your collection? Because this is not the first appearance of the New Mutants. The, the New Mutants first appeared actually in this oversized prestige format Marvel graphic novel in the early 1980s. That graphic novel did so well that uh, they ended up giving the New Mutants their own series. This is the first issue in the first New Mutants solo title. And I have to say, it's a great read. Uh, I absolutely love the New Mutants. The New Mutants is really known for giving Deadpool his debut in New Mutants 98. But uh, for those of you that are genuinely interested in reading comics, I highly suggest checking out the whole series. Next up, we have a book that I do not have in my collection. That is Static Number 1. This is the first appearance of Static Shock. And Static Shock is a character that's a little bit underrated, but he is super significant. I've read somewhere that he was the first black superhero to get his own television series. Uh, if you're around my age, uh, you probably remember that in the 1990s, there was actually a pretty cool show called Static Shock, which was on the kids' WB Spider-Man. Two, number one. And this is the first appearance of Miles Morales from Earth 616, 
who's a, kind of an evil version of the character, and he eventually becomes Ultimatum. Uh, if you are collecting currently, or you're a seasoned collector, you will know that anything with Miles Morales right now is really spiking in price. So if you're going to add this book to your collection, add it now. Why all the hype over Ma Miles Morales? Well, apparently, Miles Morales is rumored to be making an appearance in the next round of MCU films. Following that book, we have Infinity Gauntlet number one, the beloved Infinity Gauntlet number one. I absolutely love this. I know I say this about a lot of books, but uh, Infinity Gauntlet is such a great storyline. It's a limited six issue series that. Uh, was published in the early 1990s. It was so great that uh, there's a, there was a movie that came out. You might have heard of it. It was called um, Avengers Infinity War and actually got a sequel too, and it was called uh, Avengers Endgame. Yeah, I, you, you might have heard of those, right? I remember when I bought this book, I actually bought it in a lot of uh, all six issues in the series, and I didn't spend very much for it. This book has gone up in price a little bit, especially since the uh, Avengers movies that were related to this storyline. However, the good news is I don't think this book will likely go up in price any longer just because of the hype over uh, Avengers Infinity War and, and, and Endgame and everything, it's essentially over. So uh, I can't see that, I don't foresee that this book will increase in price uh, any longer and I don't think it will go over the $20 price point. Wolverine Origins number 10 and this is the first appearance of Wolverine's son. I believe his name is Dokken or Dakin. I'm, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. Excuse my pronounce, pronunciation. Uh, but uh, this is definitely a book that is worth adding to your collection uh, due to that first appearance. Spider-Gwen 2 number 24. This is the first appearance of Gwenum. Anything with Spider-Gwen uh, nowadays too is also doing very very well uh, so definitely add this book to your collection because anything that uh, relates to spider gwen or gwenum um, is just really spiking in price so if you're going to add this book to your collection uh, do it soon before it is no longer in the under $20 uh, range so I actually love the whole concept of Spider-Gwen because it really goes to show you that a good character will stand the test of time. People loved Gwen Stacy back in the 60s and early 70s and a lot of people were shocked and outraged when they killed her off. But so many years later, when they bring her back as Spider-Gwen, you can tell how much people genuinely loved Gwen Stacy because this character nowadays is is loved by fans and uh, the prices on her books really shows you uh, how popular and how loved Gwen Stacy is. Wolverine volume 2 number 10. So this was the first ongoing Wolverine solo series. As, as you probably all know, the first solo Wolverine series was actually limited and it was by uh, Chris Claremont with art by Frank Miller. Years later, just because Wolverine continued rising in popularity, they decided to give him his own ongoing series. And uh, this book here, this number 10 here, uh, is, is part of that series there. What is so significant about this book? Uh, well, I'll tell you when I bought it, uh, I personally thought this was the first time that Wolverine and Sabretooth went up against each other, but that's technically not the case. Uh, this is the first time that Sabretooth appeared in a Wolverine comic, and that is what makes this little gem here significant. I love this book, uh, that first uh, ongoing Wolverine solo series is great, definitely worth the read if you can pick up those issues. Venom number nine, and this is the first appearance of Dylan Brock, who is the son of Eddie Brock, also a great book to pick up. Anything with Venom uh, or anything Venom related uh, continues to go up in price. Venom has always been a, a popular character, but uh, there is another Venom movie coming out. Venom, I guess it's called Venom 2. Our next book is probably my favorite on this list, and that is Web of Spider-Man number one. How do you know when a character is popular? Well, that is when you give them not one, not two, but three ongoing series. 
And Web of Spider-Man here is the first issue of the third ongoing uh, series dedicated to Spider-Man. Now, there are no first appearances in here. Uh, something significant does happen in this issue. And uh, that's basically uh, when Peter Parker finally is able to separate himself with the symbiote. And he goes into that bell tower and the bell tower makes all the noise and the symbiote gets all um, irritated and basically leaves Peter Parker. That's when the symbiote starts feeling rejected. That all happens in this book. Definitely worth the money and it's worth the pickup and absolutely worth the read. My pick for the next book is probably gonna surprise a few of you and that is Thor number one, featuring the first appearance of Jane Foster as Thor. Now, a lot of people hate this book uh, just because it was part of that era of what pe some people like to call so social justice warrior Marvel, where Marvel was uh, giving all of these, replacing all of their flagship characters with characters of diverse backgrounds. At the end of the day, whether you hated or you loved Marvel's new uh, approach to uh, writing their characters, this book is getting the attention of some people and it's definitely worth to add to your collection. It is, it is a piece of history. I mean, Thor's a woman for the first time, right? So why wouldn't you add that to your collection if you could get it for under $20 especially? Next is a classic X-Men issue. This is X-Men number 166, which is a double-sized issue. And this features the first appearance of Lockheed and also the death of the Brood Queen. Dark Horse presents annual number one. This is actually a book that I didn't know about. And this is the first appearance of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in comic books. I actually think this is kind of cool, and if I ever find this book, I actually might want to add it to my collection. I'm actually a little bit of a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. Um, I actually don't have any Buffy comics, but uh, I absolutely uh, love the TV series. Wolverine Volume 2, Number 8. I actually have this book as well, but I was going through my pile that I have here, and apparently I forgot to fish it out, so I, I apologize. But I do have this book in my collection, uh, and it's definitely another great one from that uh, ongoing Wolverine series from the late 1980s. Uh, the only significance with this book here is it's a classic cover. It features uh, Wolverine and, and the Hulk, and it is really something to look at. Batman number 608. This is the first issue in the famous Batman Hush storyline. I don't have this book, but I have read the Batman Hush storyline. I have to say it's not my favorite Batman story. Uh, I know a lot of people that actually absolutely go nuts for this uh, story, but um, it wasn't personally my favorite. But nevertheless, it is a very popular story and this is a very, very, a very popular issue. So uh, definitely worth it to add to your collection. Hulk number 16. Uh, this here is the first full appearance of the Red She-Hulk. And as we know, She-Hulk is getting her own Disney Plus series and anything with She-Hulk in it is uh, spiking currently. So get it while you can. Rocket Raccoon number one, and you probably all guessed it. This is the first Rocket Raccoon solo series. This actually is not the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon. Believe it or not, Rocket Raccoon made his first appearance in The Incredible Hulk, uh, but he became so popular he eventually got his own uh, ongoing series. And Rocket Raccoon's actually great. I know um, when you when you hear his name, he kind of sounds a little lame, uh, but he's actually my favorite character uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy. So uh, definitely worth to pick up. Uh, if you're just a general fan of comic books, but especially if you're a fan of Rocket Raccoon. The last two books on the list are also favorites of mine. We have Alpha Flight number one. This book here is, I, I, when I told you Web Spider-Man number one was my favorite book on the list, I think I lied. This is probably actually my favorite book on the list. Uh, not only because I love this run, but also because uh, Alpha Flight is essentially like the Canadian X-Men. And I myself am Canadian, so I thought it was really cool to see that 
Marvel gave some Canadian representation in their books in uh, in the early 1980s. But uh, nevertheless, uh, whether you're Canadian or, n- or not, uh, Alpha Flight is definitely worth the pickup. Uh, this series here is, is great. There are a lot of first appearances in this book. I know it's the first appearance of Marina. It's the first appearance of Puck. It isn't the first appearance of uh, the... Alpha Flight team as a whole, they actually made uh, their debut in X-Men number 121, I believe. Uh, But uh, this is their first solo series, and uh, again, great, great read. In in the 1980s, Marvel had a lot of stellar books, a lot of heavy hitter books that were just great. And I really feel that the writing and the quality of the writing in this book just really, really keeps up with the other books. And uh, it, it really held its own. Uh, when you compared it to a lot of other great things that Marvel was doing in the 1980s. Our last book on today's list is Spawn number one. This is the first appearance of Spawn and the first Spawn title. This book back in 1993 just sold like hotcakes, mainly because it was uh, Todd McFarlane uh, who both uh, wrote and uh, drew this book. Now, Todd McFarlane, I have to say in this book, he really showed how much he improved as a writer. Uh, you know, he, he tried his hand at writing in Spider-Man number one back in 1991. Uh, Marvel gave him, a, gave him a shot at writing just because he was so darn popular. Uh, but the writing there was a little subpar. It got a little bit better as, as time progressed, uh, but really just failed to resonate with me. By the time we get to Spawn, we really see uh, McFarlane's writing skills improve now mind you it's nothing groundbreaking i mean his writing isn't like alan moore's or anything like that or or neil gaiman's but he really shows that he 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 can put together a comic book story and i I love spawn the first 12 issues of spawn were just great and i'm so happy to have them in my collection definitely worth the pickup uh for the longest time this book was probably you probably could have gotten in dollar bins but uh that's definitely not the case anymore in the 1990s there was a lot of crap that image comics was putting out and i have to say this is probably i haven't read every single image and valiant book from the 1990s but of all the image and valiant books especially of all the image books that i've read uh this is definitely the best so uh highly recommend it pick it up that about does it for our list today but that doesn't mean that we are finished talking about collectible key issues of comic books to add to your collection for under $20. I actually have a lot more books that I would like to talk about, but I did not want to make this video too, too long. So there will definitely be a part two. Stay tuned. Really hope you enjoyed this video today. As always, leave me a comment. Let me know of any other books that you feel should be in this list. I really love uh, reading your comments and interacting with all the viewers. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.